Hello everybody, long time no see, um, I should be back now, anyway, in this video I'm going to present a funny one-liner that's going to crash windows, to run it we will need the command interpreter, oh, yep, yep, great theme colors windows, thank you, okay, let's run it, you know, let's paste that real quick, this one-liner isn't gonna work on PowerShell or any of its derivatives since it only operates under the real command prompt. It uses the batch syntax. This might not be um, apparent at first sight, but it is indeed a batch one-liner. I'm gonna explain it in a little bit. So let's go ahead and run it, see what happens. Alright, nothing at first. I can see the title change but that's the extent of it. So just gotta wait a little bit. Script must be loading, right? Still nothing. The system cannot... Yep. That's it. <laughs> it's over. I think the video driver crashed. Something bad surely happened. So... Control Alt Delete does not work. Control Shift Escape does not work. Can't run it. Can't run the task manager. Alt F4 nothing so um <laughs> actually I haven't had this happen to me this is kind of it's kind of lucky I feel like <laughs> oh so we got a uh, our first error the application was unable to start correctly click OK to close the application oh the video driver is back we have the task manager right here Everything is dead. Oh my god, the task manager. You good? <laughs> the video driver crashed again. Can hear the error. Say like control L delete does not work. Honestly, I probably had a window of opportunity there when the video driver restored itself and the task manager appeared and unfroze for a split second. But it's highly unlikely I'd be able to do anything about it at that point. So the only way out now is to reset the computer, and in my case, the virtual machine. The video driver likely crashed because VMware drivers are a little finicky when they go low on resources. So now let's get to the fun part. Um, go ahead and get under the hood and uh, see how it works. In the most concise fashion, it's a fork bomb. Do you guys remember the funny bash one-liner consisting entirely out of symbols? Well, it's rather popular. I, I, as a matter of fact, I think I even saw someone with a tattoo of that symbol sequence on their arm. <laughs> what I've shown you here is basically the Windows equivalent of that in batch. It's not as neat as I wanted it to be, and some of you can maybe see right through it, but I tried my best to craft a convoluted and obfuscated piece. Why is it called a fork bomb though? It has to do with process creation. It's a really dumb and <laughs> unintuitive way to think about it, but it originated in Linux, so hopefully that should clear some things up. Fork is a Unix system call that creates a copy of the current process they really do have some of the worst terminology out in the wild, but think about it as a railroad junction that kind of resembles a two-prong fork. Fun fact, that's why creating a carbon copy of a GitHub repository is officially called forking. I think they even have an icon for that. We have it called create process in Windows. That's simple, descriptive, and intuitive. Anyway, whenever you fork or duplicate a process, it creates a copy of itself. 
pretty simple. And uh, that duplicate requires plenty of overhead resources to be allocated in order to register and start itself. That's where the resources come into play. Each double you require at minimum, well, a double of the current process overhead. And what a fork bomb does, it recursively creates processes with a sole purpose for them to fork themselves again and again and again and again. It's a binary tree, and the more operations pass, the more resources are required. It keeps executing until the system runs out of resources. It's as simple as it gets, but it's very effective. Since batch is objectively relatively garbage, I don't believe there is a way to make this command look cooler. Let's see what it does though. First, we can get rid of the redundant carrots because all they do is escape the special characters, like the pipe right here. And that's the only special character, the pipe at the beginning. Once we get rid of them, uh, let's add a couple of spaces between the operators. There's the end operator. And uh, yeah, that's it. That makes it way more readable. Can you see it now? Not yet? Let's continue simplifying. Let's get rid of the redirection to the null, which uh, silences the console output. Next, the sign at before echo makes it less verbose, but adds nothing. And neither does the period after it. It's significant when you want to create a blank line, but otherwise it's ignored. So, now, this is much more obvious. In this one-liner, I create a file called $_cmd, fill it, fill it in with uh, percent %0, piped to percent %0, and then run it right here. Whenever you run a batch or command file, they're interchangeable terms, you have access to the so-called argument vector. And the zeroth element of the argument vector, which is the percent zero right here, um, is the command file that's being run. So essentially, I pipe each batch script, namely percent zero, onto itself, which is percent zero, which creates another command line process with a script that pipes itself onto itself. That's by definition a fork bomb. So yeah, that's how it works. I'm not gonna run it on my host machine. Or am I? Well, maybe I can. Let's, let's try it out real quick. Oh boy, this looks horrible. All right. Um, might hit one liner in like 15 minutes, but I think it looks pretty cool. And I like the concept of being able to mimic such a glorious one liner that's only available in Linux. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching and take care. Isn't that beautiful?